Bayes' imagination inside mathematics. So who here wants an ice cream right now? <laughs> Me too, but let's talk about it later. <laughs> First of all, let's talk about some math, some simple one. Why is six afraid of seven? That's right, because seven ain't nine. That's just a simple answer, but on the other hand, why are us humans afraid of math? That's because we're often afraid of numbers. We sometimes view those numbers as insurmountable challenge that keep hitting on us. Just look at this figure and see if it somehow reminds you of the fear that you have over math. If it does, that's because we often picture those figures as grand figures which only scientists and mathematicians will venture to take a step in. But actually, don't look at these numbers as just numbers. We sometimes describe math as a language itself because we saw human languages are not even capable of explaining the complexity of it. But today, I'm here not to just talk about math, but more importantly, let's talk beyond math. Let's talk about how math powers imagination and how it helps us to explore and even construct the world. People often value math as only logical reasoning and problem solving skills. Of course, math cannot be separated from those two. But remember, there are only tools which help us to approach the nature of math. There can be a pathway to understanding, but they are never the purpose that we're aiming for. In fact, Everything in math leads to creativity and imagination. Now, let's get back to our ice cream. Imagine you are holding this ice cream. And it's a pretty typical one. As you can see, it consists of two parts, a creamy topping and crispy cone. Imagine you're holding it, and it happens to be someone who just heard my TED talk, and you are inspired to be a mathematician for one day. Um, you're looking at it, then you start randomly throw throwing different mathematical questions towards this poor ice cream. You saw, oh, how can we figure out the volume of this topping? Or is this beautiful geometric shape somehow connected to the secret of Fibonacci sequence? Great questions, of course, but then after a minute, you got bored. Then tragedy occurs. You dropped it. What can we do now? But look at it, the cone part is so good. Can we at least pick it up? It's five seconds roll. It, <laughs> it won't make a big difference. But now the only thing you have is a cone. It's just a cone sitting there doing nothing. So why don't we do something to it? Something exciting, like cut it open. That might not sound very mathematical indeed, but let's try it because it sounds creative. Um, cutting it open can be fun because you find several ways of doing it. You can cut it open either like that, or like that, or like that. And they give you different outcomes if you look at them from sideways. That cut gives you a circle. That one gives you an ellipse. And finally, that one, it gives you a curve, which we usually call a parabola. These shapes as mathematicians, will all, well, as what mathematicians always do, we gave them a fancy name. We call them conic sections. And conic sections are actually everywhere. You can find them from grand human buildings to small, beautiful nature belongings. And any basketball players here around? If you are one, please raise your hand. See, we have a lot of basketball players here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one myself, too. And what happens when you throw a ball? Kesna, could you please catch this? Oops, sorry. <laughs> nice catch anyways. But did you just see what's happening? That was a parabola that you just created. When you throw a ball, you always get a parabola. And parabola are everywhere. You can literally spot it. Here's a parabola, and you can spot it from everywhere. You can spot it when a dolphin jumps out of water, when a comet sweeps across the sky, or look into a mirror, then you will find that your eyes, they're actually in parabolic structure too. Parabolas, they are beautiful shapes, and they're just as powerful at the same time. You can find them in the world famous building, the Golden Gate Bridge. Bridges are meant to be built strong so that they can support the weight or heavy loads that's acting on it. 
So why is the parabolic structure applied in bridges? Because it actually helps the bridge to support any heavy loads that it needs to overcome. When a force is applied to a specific region on the bridge, the parabola actually has the ability to send it down to different parts of the parabolic structure. Because a parabola is placed unevenly, the middle is arching up and the other parts, they're bending down. So when a force is applied, it can distribute it to different places so that parabolic structure can usually obtain much more weight than other structures such as a straight line or anything else. Now let's think back what we just did. That is called math. Don't be shocked by me, but you were doing math with me together. Math might be the most imaginative form of art ever. You can, did you just think back? We started from simply a ice cream and a drop, and then we get conic sections and parabola, now we're here. Math is imaginative because it can give us so many ways of so many different things. And mathematic every mathematician is an artist in their own way for being creative enough to connect concepts together and also to start from only a simple what is and end with amazingly creative ideas and connections between things. And and our imagination is just never enough. You can always dive deeper. Imagination and creativity, actually, they often come hand in hand because every piece of creation starts from a single idea to try and also from imagining and constructing an idea. If you're creative enough, you can even find connections between this bridge, fantastic bridge, between this bridge and an egg. Look at that egg, what do you find? You can also find parabolic structure in this egg. You can also picture it as an ellipse or you can either picture it as, the con the, as two parabolic structures that are connected. Actually, it works the same way just it did with the bridge. When a specific force is applied to this egg, it, the force got distributed to different parts of the egg so the shell can overcome so much force. Have you ever tried to squeeze an egg with only your palm? Try it. It's extremely hard to break the egg. There's actually a challenge on YouTube that's called Impossible Egg Crush. Why impossible? Because it's hard. And an egg, by experimenting it, people find out it actually takes more than 26 kilograms of weight to break an egg by clutch, clutching it in the upright position. 26 kilograms. That's almost the weight of a eight-year-old. And thanks to our parabola, they are so, so powerful. Another example of applying parabola can be Eiffel Tower. You all have seen this. And actually, I don't know if you thought about this, Eiffel Tower is made of all metals. And these metals, they um, at total, the Eiffel Tower approximately weighs 10,000 and 100 tons. And it's sim simply supported by a parabolic structure at a base. Parabolas, they're amazing. And now don't be shocked by this, but you are doing math again. Use your imagination and creativity along with me. Math powers imagination and creativity, and those two are actually the essence of, of our technology and now the world. As Nikola Tesla once said, Facts and ideas are dead in themselves, and it's the imagination that brings life to them. And everyone is a mathematician because everyone has the ability to cut a cone open or create a fantastic, perfect parabola by throwing a ball. You are all mathematicians, and thank you very much. And also, thanks for our ice cream.